Hey, what's up, viewer? Welcome to the Snebulous Live Development Creation Series. This is day 13, hour 4, and I am continuing the work required to generate the galaxy and the celestials within the galaxy. So the last thing I was working on was starting the game and making sure the galactic disk is the correct size and unfortunately it's not. If I do a manual spline scale it scales the it winds up scaling the yeah I can't believe this is so bizarre like this. So I'm not sure why it's happening exactly. Oh well let me see here. Yeah, it's like running to infinity for some reason. So let me see here. Arm spline. It's only at 10,000. Some odd. The nebula is 3,000. But the disk is 10,000. So a nebula shouldn't be this gigantic. So let me turn this off really quickly. Yeah, I'm not sure why they are so screwed up. But it's definitely not correct, that's for sure. So I must be doing something very wrong in my arm splining. Oh, hey, let's see here. So, perhaps instead of scaling it and raising the, or moving the, oh, the other thing was, okay, let's try it like this. I, th I don't know if my, I don't know if these are actually assigning properly or not. So I need to double check here. Alright, so if I take a look at the arm spline, it says the positions are all the same, and it has this nebula, but they are probably way too small. And it looks like their positions are all stacked on top of each other, so, which would indicate that the scale changed, but the position did not. So if I zoom in real quick on a nebula here. Okay, so actually that's correct, size-wise, more or less. It's extremely thin, fix that. And I'll probably have to in order to fit stars in there, but the idea is that it's like, it's supposed to just have a nebula out here, basically. And it's not selecting properly. Not sure why that is. I have to work on that. Maybe it's too the camera's too far away to cast a ray. Okay, so this is basically not working. And it's not working because I'm not actually assigning to the spline containers. So let me see if I can go like this. And it was saying I cannot, so let me see. Well, let me this time. 
Okay, so it's acting like it will. So let me try this. Right, and so that's basically correct. It's a little, the angle seems a little off. And then, yeah, these, let me see here, is the camera. It's inside the view or whatever. Yeah, I don't know why that's that one is being particular particular. It's actually the shader is actually changing, but it's not applying for some reason. And it's not letting me pan the camera. So, or it is panning, but it's just tiny panning. Let's see. If I use physical camera, does that change anything? No. If I change the far plane to an extra zero, does this do anything? No. What about changing the field of view to be even wider? So I am not sure why this one is strangely not working. So this one, yeah, it's very strange. What happens if I just, I'm gonna make a move it in here and see if this does anything. All right, so it's, uh, okay, so it almost looks like it's got to do with the normal, the camera normal, or the, Like the angle to the, I guess like the view, the view angle is actually extremely light, more or less, is my best idea, best idea I've got. So it, it is, it's true that it's not letting me select them. But this worked, finally. And then... Dang it, so this just this weird little problem with... Probably raycast distance or something. Although, it might just be that it's... Well, it's not selecting them now either. And I could possibly do a nebula layer Yeah, I don't know, it's kind of bizarre. And the camera angle is a little strange. So if I bring down the field of view, field of view to like 80 or something, now what happens if I take a look? So you can see it tinting just a smidge. But it's definitely not selecting properly. Like, current active selection does not select. It's not, so for some reason the raycast is not activating. I'll have to deal with that. The main thing would be... Man. So the completely manual camera position is just not working perfectly. I'm just not familiar with what kind of math I would use for this. It would be more like what I was doing earlier with these things. Or maybe orient game camera.
and set the camera range to like 100,000. And let's see how this looks. And I might even have to change the other values of the camera too. All right, so that's actually way too far, being 100,000 away. So how about 10,000? Close. So even at this range, the recast is possibly not working. So maybe 25,000 or something. Oh, you know what I just realized? Perhaps, well, I actually don't know if that's, I don't know if that would be the problem, but I, have, I just had an idea for what the problem might be. I guess that's a little better, but I guess it's basically fine. Let's see here, where was the... I'm looking for the pan camera thing here. I think there's a speed on this. Pan damper. Crap, which way does that which way does that work? Okay, like this, does it go faster or not quite. So set it to one. Set it to zero point zero zero. Zero one. And now it's like not even working at all. It's really tiny actually. So maybe it is like 100,000. Or a million almost. It's just extremely small either way. Um, maybe a little bit better. That's a, that one's a little better, but then when I go up to here, it's like it goes back to not working very good. So let me double check. Let's see, when am I grabbing? Oh, I'm not using. Okay, so it's just going to be, I'm going to have to rework that whole thing for that to work, so I'm just going to ignore it for now, and double check something. If I check one of my nebula objects, and I look at the collider, okay, so this is why the raycast isn't working because they haven't made the collider the right size. The at least I don't think so. So let me go into scene view. If I click on this, it says that the collider is scaled. Or does it? Okay, no, it's not. So yeah, I've got a oh wait. No, this is saying that the, the collider is is here actually. Right? If I increase this, it's yeah, it's, I mean, darn, okay, so that's not screwed up. All right, well, the only thing I can imagine then is it's something to do with the camera range. So let me open this up here real quick. 
And I just have to take a look at Unity 3D. Whoops, crap. So Unity 3D max raycast range. Okay, so these are claiming that it's not limited. So I am not sure, really, to be honest. It's, okay, so the is hovered is working, but the is active selection is not working anymore. Alright, so I'm just not going to worry about it for now. Let's consider... Well, I guess we we'll have to select it to do the next part anyway. So let's assume these are nebula. Needs a lot of work, but the idea is there. And I'm thinking about, I'm probably just gonna change the shader a little bit since it's acting like this. And then and basically, I'm going to have to check the raycast because. I have to test if it's actually going to... Oh, and did I set a maximum range or something? I did. I don't know why I did that. And I think it does that by default if I yank this out anyway. Okay. So that might have been all that was. So now they're selecting, but I've got the Fresnel effect thing screwing them up a little bit. So I'm going to jump in here real, f real fast, and I'm very likely going to yank that Fresnel effect. And instead just run... Like... I'm just going to yank these off and so we've just got straight white and let me see is there an intensity to this or not not really So there's white, yellow, and blue are the colors I went with. So I need to consider where they were. All right, so if 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 it's not getting hovered, it needs to be white. 
and if it is not the active selection, it needs to be white. If it is hovered, it needs to be blue. If it is active selection, it needs to be yellow. So let me see if this changes the how it how it looks. All right, so that makes it just look a little better. So it's just because of the shader, the type of shader I was using. Okay, I might even change the color. Um, to green real quick, since the nebula or since the galaxy core is already kind of yellow. I'll just do a normal green here. And then we have to go back to our old code that was allowing us to enter a nebula. And we have to like Take the nebula area and we basically have to put the camera put a, put the camera like inside of it basically okay If the if it transitions in, I suppose it would help with like immersion to a certain extent. If I'm actually selecting and scrolling up, and it's not working. So my interselected nebula from Galaxy View is actually not correct for some reason anymore. So I'll have to figure that out. All right. So actually. One easy thing I can do is tweak the nebula prefab and simply add a virtual camera to it, basically. We'll just call it this. I'm not sure the scale is like that, but okay. Oh, I guess I see why. It's like changing its size. It's like kind of ratioing with that. It's kind of interesting. Okay. So there's a one. It's technically at one one one. All right. So now it has a CMV cam one. And let's see, the main camera now has a cinema machine brain on it. Does that mean that I can, this is where I set up the custom blend. Okay, so somewhere I have to
I can't remember how, but I have to set up a blender, a blend. Somewhere there's like a list of blends. So let me see if I can create a blend. There's a blend list camera. Okay, so I guess it's like an example thing. Um, and again, I don't actually know how to. Do a proper cinema machine blend. Yeah, I guess I'll call this. I'll call this blend camera as an object, and I can actually search for that. So Nebula has to, or yeah, Nebula has to. All right, but hold on. Does this thing have the? It does have a camera. Okay, so I need to make a new script here called, what should I call this? I suppose we should call it spawn virtual blend cam, blend camera. And essentially on start we have to we we already have it saved, we don't have to instantiate it. So basically, this is kind of similar to the other camera code where we were using quaternions to rotate it in certain directions. So actually, there already is a spawn. There already is a virtual blend camera spawn. Instead, what I'm trying to do is Say something like theme object dot find blend camera, and this is a cinema machine blend list camera. Oh, and actually, and let me see if I can include Cinema Machine. That way, I can say Cinema Machine Blendless Camera, like this. Thought. Okay, I guess not. Weird.
And I guess I can change this to say blend this camera. Then I come down here and check what exactly I can grab from here. I can get child cameras. I actually didn't see anything there. So let me double check. Virtual camera children. Oh, actually, let me test. If I create a new random virtual camera, it actually automatically added it to the children list. But the blend thing is not. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey, remove these again. So, what if I. Okay, so adding a virtual camera. Automatically adds it, but it doesn't add to this list. So, once again, this is where, like, Just using like the, if I just set up like two separate cameras, and then like lerped, or if I just had a position, and then lerped the main camera, it would be not that difficult. Instead, I'm trying to kind of figure out how to get a cinema machine to work because I know I'm, I know I should be able to use this thing to blend the camera automatically. So I suppose the first step would be to see whether or not I can actually add a new camera to it. So we're still looking here. Virtual camera game object. Yeah, honestly, I just don't see a good option. Oh, there's child cameras, but I can only get those. I can't, they don't have a setter on this. Oh, it does say Cinemachine Virtual Camera Base, though. Okay, so live child would be like the, okay.
Let's see, so I know over here, it goes from loop to, oh, so that's also there. Yeah, I just, I'm not sure about this at all. I am not sure which property I'm supposed to use here. So there is a live child option that you can change. And there's follow targeting, but I'm not using any of that. There's a child cameras that you can only get though. So like assigning live child is like the closest thing I can imagine. It does have a lot of stuff built into it by default. But what I'm trying to do is actually pretty simple. I'm just trying to like alert in. It's really all I'm trying to do. And Cine Machine is supposed to do that better. It is supposed to help with this process, but I'm not finding it very helpful. So I can add a virtual camera child. And I, okay, so I guess I could try doing that first. So we have blend camera. I don't really need the component. So we just grab the game object. Okay, and more or less, we are actually going to say get component, or no, wait, not get component. Game object dot find
And let me double check what I called it. CM, I just want, okay, so. I just want to blame the camera in here also. And then we run back over here. And that really is the only override. So I would have to say game object. Or no, I'm not trying to find the game object, am I? Transform.find child. Blend camera. This is deprecated. So this is just use um, and I'm gonna actually grab its game object. And I want to say blend list camera. dot child dot parent dot transform dot parent child so I can't set a parent transform So nebula blend camera dot transform dot parent equals blend list camera dot transform. And if this works correctly, I should actually this isn't even getting activated here. This should set the f the blend up as an element. No, I'm not updating these. I changed that line of code anyway. Give a second to compile here and okay, so this works. Blend camera should transfer the virtual camera from the nebula to the blend camera. And it's jinking it, jinking itself up because it's like putting itself right onto the blend camera. Or it's I'm not sure what it's doing actually. All right, so this is where I'm just gonna need. This is where I'm just gonna like need more experience with. All right, it didn't work anyway. It didn't shift to the transform. Oh. It's probably because I did not put the component on there. So now let's see if it does it. Okay, so it does have three blend cameras, and the nebula no longer have them. And it is, it does have them in here correctly, correctly set up. So if I were to come in here and grab, and uh, they're all blend camera. 
the differentiation. And yeah, I'm screwing up Cinema Machine basically. It's getting there, but it needs some work. I don't know how to do the blends. And then it's saying they're all the same one. Yeah, I really don't know. If I don't use a blend camera, and my Nebula does not use a blend camera, virtual camera, or spawn virtual blend camera, then more or less what I can do is I could just move the camera. And to do that, the main camera basically needs a Kind of in something like this. Or this one's empty anyway. So I can split this up, which, okay, so let me think about this. If the player zooms in, it's always going from. It doesn't matter. If a change is decided, current camera lerps to selections camera position which is pretty straightforward so let me see this I'm actually going to delete I'm not really using set default camera position anymore either but I'll leave it in there I mean, the camera's position needs to be kind of like inside of the nebula. Or it needs, to, it needs to have a few things. It needs to change its position and it potentially needs to change its view range, basically. However, there is going to have to be a special lerp thing going on. So I'm really running out of energy. I'm going to try and finish up this last 10 minutes here.
Alright, so if I spawn a nebula, essentially like the idea would be I could like zoom in to get a pretty solid field of view of all of the stars in the nebula. Basically. Alright, um, I'm going to cut this video a little short. I'm kind of running out of energy, so I'm going to go to bed. And I will probably maybe spend like an hour or two brushing up on my Cinemachine skills because being able to just do the transitions properly between virtual cameras would save a little bit of having to think about these algorithms and... It might just be a little bit more efficient while it's at it, so... I'm still going to try to go with that route tomorrow after I do some thinking. So I appreciate that you watched the video up to this point. I'm sorry I didn't get to the full hour. But... I'm finding myself running out of energy and it's getting a little hard to think, so... I'm going to call it for now. Thanks for keeping an eye on this, and I'll see you, t see you tomorrow.